1996, uh, Tony Rombola and Joe D'Arco. D'Arco. Darko, like Donnie Darko, Donnie but not Darko. spelled the same. Uh, joined Godsmack as the guitarist and drummer after Lee Richards had left upon learning that he had a six-year-old child, and Tommy Stewart left due to just personal differences. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much true. Uh, Tony joined the band in '96, so did Joe. Yeah, and Tommy left. Things weren't moving quick enough for him, and yeah, he had some personal things that he wanted to deal with, so he went and back to LA and uh, and Lee definitely gets surprised by that knock on the door that every man fears with like, hi, this is your kid. And uh, he did the right thing, you know, and he went and became a dad. Had to respect him for that. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. After listening to his son's copy of the Godsmack album, a father in the US complained to Walmart that the lyrics were offensive and this caused Walmart and Kmart to take the album off the shelves. Best press we ever got in our lives. Unbelievable, Fucking one amazing. person. Till this day, I still thank that guy. Really? Yeah. It was the thank best you, thing guy. he could have ever done for us. Like, we got more exposure off that than I think we ever have in the history of our career. So that was a great move on his behalf. We appreciate it. All right. These songs, Sick of Life and Awake, have both been used as background music for the United States Navy commercials. Uh, although in an interview, you said that Godsmack does not support war in general. Correct. We were the theme song for the Navy's recruit commercial for six years straight. Wow. And no uh, outrage about years, that. Three years they used Awake, and then the other three years they used Sick of Life. But um, yeah, it was, it was a good run with them, and um, we definitely support the troops all the way, always have, always will. Um, and so when we got attacked by a few columnists that um, they were trying to uh, condemn us as baby killers and things like that because our music was supporting, you know, people being recruited to, to protect your country. Um, they were calling us out as, you know, people that support war and uh, the band has never supported war, just support the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces and what they do for us so we can do what we do. Uh, the Faceless album got its name after a swimming pool incident where a lady called the cops after she saw you and Shannon Larkin skinny dipping. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. That is not true. Although I will tell you what happened. Faceless um, was, had nothing to do with Miami or anything like that. Faceless was actually written back in Massachusetts when we were first writing that album before we even decided to take it to um, Florida. And the only reason we went there is because there was too much distraction with families and friends. We couldn't get our work done, so we had to go to a remote place. Um, but yeah, the first night we were there, me and Shannon drank 11 bottles of wine, and we were wasty face. Uh, and we got up on the roof, and I don't know why, but we were totally naked, and we, <laughs> jump, we were jumping in the pool. Why not? And I remember as the sun came up, it was 8 in the morning, and it was scolding hot. The tiles on the roof were just like hot potato, you know? And I happened to look over, and this lady was just pulling up her blinds with a glass of orange juice and cleaning out her eyes, and she said, what the fuck? And I just, oh my God, sorry, and boom, and in the water. And so, um, yeah, that was just a drunken night of, um, I don't know, I don't even know why we were naked. The song Realign is about how every time you play New Orleans with Godsmack, you end up getting sick. Uh, and you attribute this to having been killed in, a, in New, New Orleans during a previous life and being haunted by evil spirits every time you go. Does that make me sound fucking crazy or what? No, the fact is, is uh, yeah, you know, I haven't, I haven't even talked about that episode in a while, but there was a time when I was going to New Orleans, I wasn't getting sick, but I was having some really bizarre things happen to me. And, um, and I actually spent some time with uh, a couple of different people that do that kind of thing, you know. Um, I don't know if it was a past life regression I had or what it was, I still can't explain it till today, but it was definitely a moment that um, helped me see that there was potentially a time that I could have lived there in another life, if you believe in that kind of thing, and, um, and had died there. And so the song became a reflection of that thought process. Um, it says on Wikipedia that you are a practicing Wiccan. Hmm. So, 
Uh, but, you know, it was also saying that it's like you're not like a warlock, you know, stirring, mm. you know, the broom in a big cauldron. Yeah, or you're, you're asking a really broad question right uh, now. Yeah, and I don't like to get into religion because everybody has their own take on it. But um, it's something that I looked into for a very long time and studied because uh, I was very intrigued by the religion. Mm -hmm. um, just as I was Native America and, you know, Buddhism and different things like that that I've looked into. And I just like to think of myself as a little bit more free spiritually than uh, honed into one specific religion. Right. Um, um, I think there's a giant big world out there and I think people should explore and find out what works best for them. And as long as we keep practicing the same um, basic rules of, you know, be a good person, do the right thing, treat people kindly, don't steal, don't kill, don't lie, then, um, you know, I think you'll, you'll be in good shape in the end.